Uh, today we're going to talk about what causes sound. Sound has a particle behind it that is in a shape of a corkscrew and it spins. And it's as easy to understand as a propeller. Now, little airplane here, you spin the crank the prop up and the propeller. If you put the propeller in a vacuum and you let it go, what's going to happen? Nothing. The propeller will turn, there will be no vibration, nothing. Sound does the same thing in a vacuum. Now, if you're in this, have this propeller in the air, like we do right now, and we crank it up real hard, and if we let it go, and through the airplane, the propeller would pull the airplane and fly through the air. So what's it doing? It's turning and it's grabbing onto some of the air. Now, when the propeller spins a certain turn, it, it has to spin several times to go the same distance through the air. Now, sound travels through the air as well, but it doesn't travel all that fast in comparison to what it does in a liquid and a gas. Sound will travel a little over 600 miles an hour through the air. Now, if you take this same propeller and you spin it up, and if you put it in water and it spins, one of the things is it's going to churn some water, but for each turn of the propeller, it's actually going to push itself further through the water for each turn. Now, what does sound do in the water? Sound will travel twice as fast through the water as it does through the air. Now, the next thing is, is if you took the propeller and you wound it up and you put it in butter, each turn as it turns in would be a solid turn, one turn for one, and it would go forward much faster than it would through the air or through the water. What does sound do? Sound can go up to 15 times faster in solids, like, like in aluminum it will go 15 times faster. So how can sound change speeds? Because it operates like a propeller. If you understand the propeller, you can understand sound. Now, one of the things is, what happens when the propeller turns? Can you hear an airplane? Brrr, you hear the propeller turning? You can hear the motor going? When the propeller turns, it produces a vibration that you can feel. Sound does that as well. Now, if we come over here, we're going to show you sound at the molecular level. This is a hydrogen key ring atom. This is a particle in the shape of a corkscrew. Now, it's going to spin like so. That's what it does. It spins. Now, if you take a corkscrew and you spin it in the air, it doesn't do anything. But if you put it into a cork and you spin it like so, it will find its way through like so. So if it were spinning, it would spin its way, snake its way through, through each atom. Now if this were a gas, the particle is going to go through, it's going to lock on, it's going to cause a vibration when it goes through, and then if it comes out on the other side and sits at its spin until it catches the next gas. That's how sound goes through at the molecular level, energy moves through matter, there's the spaces and gaps in there that the sound particle can move through. Now, next here, this is just an oxygen, but if it was like water, what would happen is the corkscrew particle, if it were to come through this side, would go through, spin a little bit on this side, come through on the other, spin a little more on the other side, and then lock into the next water molecule. So if it's going through water, it's going to be solider, okay, or more dense than a gas, so the particle is going to be able to travel faster through the water. Now, if this were all one solid, one molecule right after another, this is in there spinning, what's it going to do? It's going to go through faster, because it's got stuff to grip on. And as the particle goes through, it's going to produce a shape or a vibration based on the shape of this. That's how it works. That's how sound works. It's the shape 
of a corkscrew and it spins. And depending on what kind of atoms it comes and collides with or interacts with is how fast it's going to go. That's how it's able to be uh, going through the air at one speed, then goes into the water, doubles its speed, and then goes into aluminum and jumps to, to 15 times the speed. That's how it works. Now, the shape of this particle, the different size of the corkscrew, is going to give us pitch and frequency. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. And you're going to say, where does this sound particle come from? Well, that's going to be in Law 19, Exiting Gravity. And that will answer a lot of questions on this. So this particle and its shape and its size is what causes the compression wave. Physics and chemistry are easy with the correct geometry.